The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, welcome everyone, and thank you so much for attending today's Mastermind webinar. This is Carol Vickers on behalf of Empower Consulting Group, and we have the pleasure of hosting these webinars on behalf of Practice Pay Solutions. As you all know, Practice Pay is built on the core value of excellent service, and they deliver personalized, convenient, and affordable payment processing to small business owners like yourselves who want to automate their transactions and stop dealing with deposits or trips to the bank or bookkeeping, email management, there's so much more. And Really, you know, Practice Pay really knows this industry. They have a very high approval rating for uh, the coaches and consultants, small business people like yourselves, and they offer an incredible support through email and live, pres live, live chat support. They answer their phones, which is a wonderful thing in today's world, and offer strategy sessions, including assessing your business and current systems and offering free rate assessments. They are so committed to the success of the members that Practice Pay provides these wonderful training uh, seminars, ongoing training and development with some of the very best presenters in the world today. Just a quick bit of housekeeping. We will be happy to take questions from the audience. We'll make sure there's time at the end of today's presentation. And a recording is being made of this as well. And that will be a ma made available through Practice Pay for you. Today I have the distinct pleasure of introducing to you Darren LaCroix. Darren LaCroix, you know, do you want more product income? Do you want to earn while you sleep? Are you sincerely interested in making a lasting impact on your audience? Don't you honestly need one more hour to teach you everything about your expertise? If so, to product or not to product, there is no question. What could you learn from someone who quit their day job and survived on product sales alone? What if he tracked every product sold at every presentation? How many attendees and the dollars earned per head for the last five years? Currently, 70% of Darren LaCroix's income is derived from product sales and does not sound like an infomercial while on stage. On August 25, 2001, out of 25,000 contestants from 14 countries, Darren LaCroix, he was crowned the world champion of public speaking. He spoken in Taiwan, Malaysia, Singapore, and Oman, and I happen to know that he's up in Canada today. His last product launch yielded over $117,000. It's called Create Your Own Keynote by Next Week. In high school, Darren LaCroix was considered least likely to ever be funny. Without a funny bone in his body, but a willingness to fail and a desire to learn, he pursued his childhood dream of someday speaking to the National Speaking Association. Please join me in welcoming Darren LaCroix. Hey there. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, that's the longest I've not spoken in a long time. <laughs> I want to thank Carol for hosting these. I love Practice Pay. I've been with Practice Pay since 1998. Uh, my screen name is one of the first screen names. It's just Darren <laughs> to log in. So I'm glad to be here, but this isn't about me. This is about you and what you can walk away with from what I've learned from my on-stage and off-stage experience. So let's just jump right into the content, the question. This gentleman on the screen is David Brooks. Uh, David is a 1990 world champion of public speaking. and. The night before I competed in the World Championship of Public Speaking, there was a question that changed the course of my business, his business, and Toastmasters International, which is an enormous organization. And David had been such the consummate mentor to me. Even though he didn't coach me specifically on my speech, he had been so giving of his time, and I very much appreciated it. And I knew that David had worked for a public seminar company and was one of the leaders in the country uh, in back-of-the-room sales. Uh, but David had a challenge. David, once he finished with that company and started doing his own presentations, he had been invited to speak to Toastmasters around the world. And maybe like you, he was generally only given an hour, an hour and a half to present. So I wanted to help David because even though he is, was a better speaker and a much better writer than I was, my business was ahead of his. And I thought, what can I do to help David? So I asked him a question. And we took a walk. We were right across the street from Disneyland uh, in Anaheim, California, uh, after dinner. And I, I said, David, when you get an opportunity to speak, now Toastmasters doesn't pay you uh, 
doesn't excuse me, pay him. When you get an opportunity to speak, David, how long do they give you? And he said, 60 minutes, sometimes 90. I said, hmm, great. I said, you've been the world champion for over 11 years, so you've obviously learned more even since winning. Uh, you've taught journalism and writing at the college level, you're a professor. I said, do you have more than 90 minutes worth of material that you could help people with? He said, well, of course. I said, why are you being so selfish? And his head almost spun off. He, he was, what? <laughs> and the reason was, David was one of the best back of the room sellers. But when it came to his own presentation, he was so worried about being the back of the room hawker speaker. And he looked at it as hawking product. So he didn't want to have any of his, but he had been telling me for 10 years, he's working on a book, he's working on a book, he's working on a book. I said, David, how dare you have that information and not put it in a format that people can take it home? I said, I get that you're working on a book. It's been 10 years, though. Uh, but what if you took what you already had in the book and recorded it at home into your laptop? And David has a beautiful voice, taking that same information and captured it in a CD or an MP3. And he had never thought of that. And we'll, we'll get into my philosophy, the book versus CDs. But it changed his thinking, because I said, how dare you have that information and be so selfish that you don't put it in another format. And that's really one of the keys to my philosophy. And I never try to manipulate people into buying my product. What I want to do is serve people so much in the time that they have, not hold any secrets back, but obviously show them my ability to take concepts, make them easy to understand, so that my audience then wants more. So this is a, a mountain in, called Camelback in Phoenix, if you've ever been there. And if you notice on the left-hand side there, there's a handrail going up, and people are going up this particular steep part of the mountain. And when, uh, I went there to uh, climb this mountain with the woman I was dating at the time. And if you notice that everyone is going up where the handrail is, obviously it makes it easier. Well, me, I'm a guy. I decided I was going to go up where there was no handrail because I'm a guy. Well, I get halfway up the side of the, that hill there, and I'm afraid of heights. And I was hugging the mountain, screaming like a teenage girl, help, help. <laughs> and, and my point to you is this. Whatever level you want to get to, wherever you want to take your business to the next height, someone has done it before you. Someone has built that handrail. Don't think like a guy. Don't allow your audience members to think like a guy. Help them. And I look at product as that handrail, an extension of you and what you've done and what you've learned to make it easier for them. So that's what this webinar is to show you what I learned the hard way. And if you haven't seen this before, then you're not using your shopping cart and not not performing business the way you could be. This is a good day. What this is, if you're not aware or haven't been getting many sales yet, this is a, a program when I launched, uh, did one of my product launches, the, the end day. This is whenever you sell a product through Practice Pay, you get a new order notice and a merchant receipt. And what this is, is sh uh, shows what I, you know, what I earned uh, during a day by having the right product and sending the right traffic to purchase it online. So the only thing I had to do was uh, have my office manager ship these. But this is a beautiful thing to see at the end of the day, that we truly uh, earn income by helping people by offering them those handrails. So my question to you is this. Do you have more value than a donut? What? Carol, does that make sense to you at all? Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, Carol, have you ever been to Krispy Kreme? Yes, I have. Okay. And if you're listening, if you've ever been to Krispy Kreme, what happens when you walk in the doorway? Carol, what happens when you walk in the doorway? It smells so good. Oh, you see <laughs> these beautiful donuts going down in the conveyor belt, being coated with sugar. You can smell them. Oh, oh my gosh. And then what does the evil employee do, Carol? They offer you a sample. They hand you one for free. <laughs> oh, 
It's euphoric. And Carol, what happens as a result of you having that first piece? I think I walk out with a dozen of them. <laughs> you walk out with more. That's the business model I want you to think of. Because when you walk out that door, you bought more because they gave you a taste. But it wasn't a taste of a horrible donut. It was a taste of a good, warm, hot piping donut. And that's what I want people to understand. That's my philosophy behind my business. My donuts are better than anyone else's. And I serve them hot. I give good value so then people want more. So I look at it this way. What's your time worth? What's, how do you leverage your time? And one of my products, one of the ways that I've been successful in my business is marketing through YouTube. So I figured it out. I made it a passion and a mission to I am going to figure out YouTube. But there's so many marketing strategies out there. But my belief is pick one, one that works for you, and become the best at it. Dive in. Don't try and do a hundred different social media strategies. Pick one and do it better than anyone else. So I chose YouTube. And then because of my success and the traffic I was driving my site, the products I was getting, the people who were coming to my boot camps, people started asking me about YouTube. So I took what I learned the hard way and I encapsulated it onto a DVD. Now, some people who are listening may be familiar with NSA, the National Speakers Association. I'm a member, and it's where we work on the business of speaking. I'm also a member of Toastmasters, where we work on the skill. Well, I offer to my local chapter in Las Vegas, where I live, anyone can take me to lunch and ask me anything, pick my brain. So if I have a chapter of, uh, let's say, 80 people, and I was to offer lunch, take me to lunch, I'll tell you whatever you want to know, it would take me 80 days of lunches to help people. Or I could take a few hours, take what I learned the hard way, and take uh, that and impact, put it on a DVD or a CD or an MP3, and then pass it out to people. Then I can multiply my time. That's how I see the power of product. That it would take me 80 days to help 80 people and, and tell them the same thing if they all wanted to know about YouTube. So. Uh, Lady in the Champs, this is uh, an event that I have with Patricia Fripp, who's going to be on your webinars next week, Ed Tate, Craig Valentine, and myself. And I was promoting Lady in the Champs once. Uh, it was a couple of years ago, and so the, one of the ways that I promoted it, and I always go to local Toastmasters clubs and tell them about what I'm doing. Well, this one particular... Toastmasters Club that I sat in on, there was this gentleman in the front of the room, uh, oh, let me explain, sorry, I put my slides out of order. Uh, at the time, I had 1.1 million views on my YouTube video, but this gentleman right here on the right, um, he was in the room and he told this great story. He said, two years ago, I went online, and he's from uh, Portugal, he said, I, I tried to, I wanted to know more about public speaking. So I went online, I went on YouTube, and I typed in public speaking. And this video came up of this man, world champion of public speaking. What's that? And I watched the video. It was pretty good. And then I watched another one. That was good, too. The next thing I knew, I was watching Darren LaCroy videos every day at lunchtime. And then, two years later, I fly to Las Vegas, I visit a Toastmasters club, and he walks in the room. <laughs> and so I was famous in his eyes, not because I won the world championship, but because I was in front of him with a good donut. Because my donuts were so good that he liked them and then he wanted more, that's why I was famous, not because I had some trophy. And my reason for this story is he ended up changing his flight back to Portugal and actually coming to our Lady in the Champs event. But I had to bring him down the funnel. I had to get uh, build some rapport with him. But that's how this works. So we look at our, our funnel of our business. I call it the funnel of trust. And Cheyenne, my office manager who runs my business, said, when you do the funnel, you have to make the top of it look like a donut. So, reinforce the message that that's why the top looks like a donut so I believe what we need is free compelling content to get people into your funnel of trust but the steps are we need a free program to get people into our funnel once they're in the funnel then we let them know about our $20 program of how they can learn from us 
We want that to lead to a $97 program, a $297 program, a $497 program, and then maybe a $1,000 program. And these can be varying things. The $20 could be a CD or an MP3, uh, down to the $997 could be a two-day boot camp or one-on-one -on -one coaching with you over several months. But people aren't going to necessarily jump from free to a thousand. So we need to take them down in steps. But those write those numbers down because those are the steps that work. Because I realize that some people have uh, they might have a twenty and a ninety-seven, and then they might have a nine ninety-seven. But now it's almost like you trip people, and we get a, people aren't as willing to make that big jump. Uh, so. When you're looking and creating your business, don't get intimidated by this. I've been doing this for 20 years, but you start by creating that $20 program. Then create the 97, so at least you're building it one step at a time. So try and not miss a step in there. That's, that's what I did. So now I have four different funnels of my business, uh, and I go and I ch build each of them in this general fashion. So Patricia Fripp, who you'll be learning from next week, says, Package your process, and you can profit. She and I were going to a Christmas event last year for the National Speakers Association, so that was her and I. But I wanted to package her process. She's a speech coach. She gets about $5,000 a day to work with a CEO. And she had many $20 products across the top, but she didn't have one that packaged the whole process. How do you get the idea for a speech? Come up with your message. Uh, define, refine your message. How do we prove your message, improve your premise, as we call it? So she never, she walked people through, but she never packaged her process. So when I realized I had a big hole in my business that I taught people how to be funnier, I taught them how to market themselves, I taught them how to take their speech from good to great, but the one thing I was missing was how to write your speech. So because she was the best in the world at this, in my opinion, I teamed up with her to create that package. So now let's look from a higher view above the funnel, looking down on the funnel. Look at different strategies that you can do for free to get people into your funnel, to get them into your Krispy Kreme donut store. Uh, so I have a, an inspirational, this is one of my funnel, I have 365inspirationalquotes.com, so that free website. I've done interviews. I do did one on SpeakerNet News, but I have interviews, honestly, uh, almost every week where someone is interviewing me for their blog or an article or a book or something like that. But interviews, in your interview, you want to have the opportunity to, um, to give your website to send people into your funnel. Postmasters Magazine, this is one place that I pay to get people into my funnel. Most everything else is free. Uh, but getting in front of the right people. So here's the one place I pay. Often I do free programs. Here while I'm in Vancouver, tomorrow night I'm going to do a program for the local Toastmasters. And part of that, I'm going for free, but part of that is to build my list and get people into my funnel. Often I do paid speeches. That's part of my business. But even when I'm getting paid, I still get people into my funnel. I sign them up for my different free offers so they can learn more. One of them being 52GetPaidToSpeakTips.com, where I teach people the business of speaking uh, with a one weekly lesson for 52 weeks. My YouTube channel, that's probably one of the best ways that I build people's trust and then bring them down the funnel. So I have about 900 videos online. If you go to YouTube.com, <coughs> excuse me, slash stage <coughs> uh, my regular website, DarrenLaCroix.com. Um, my newsletter, which is called Stage Time, which is a free newsletter that goes out every week on Tuesday, went out this morning. Uh, so just to give you an idea of one of my funnels, so for the skill of speaking, which is one of my funnels, I will do a speech which will lead people to know about my Fast Start Pack, my $50 program. Uh, that will lead people to know about Own the Stage. And then that might lead people to my live Get Coached to Speak camp. And then I also have a community. Another way to have another stream of income is have a support community where people pay you monthly for your advice, for the ability to ask you questions. On one of my other funnels, the Business of Speaking funnel, I have my free 52 Get Paid to Speak tips. That leads people to my first $20 CD. That leads people to YouTube. 
to my Get Paid to Speak program, then also to a community on the business side of speaking where people can ask and consult with me for a very low fee, but at the same time for me, it's me on many. So uh, let's just uh, pause right there for a second. Carol, any questions coming in? Uh, any questions about what I've done so far? Not just at the moment, just fabulous, and I'm taking lots of notes, and I'm sure they are as well. <laughs> Excellent. Very cool. Well, uh, so here's my question. How many ways do you transfer value? Meaning, how many streams of income do you want? I want you to double your value, not your effort. Because a lot of people get caught up in it. It's the same content. Well, but people consume in different formats. I'm not a reader. To get me to read a book uh, can be challenging. I have a few on my nightstand, but I don't read that much. But you give me an audio, and I, I can consume that. Uh, while I take my walk in the morning or while I'm walking around or, or in my office while I'm doing some work. So these are different ideas, CDs, books, webinars, uh, boot camps, keynotes, teleseminars like this one. This one is a, is a free one, but I also do paid ones. Uh, membership, support, community, consulting, maybe you do that, Con coaching, uh, affiliate income, MP3s, all different ways to transfer your value. Your value is in your perspective. Your value is in your ability to take information and make it into a usable step-by-step -step process that can help me as a listener go where I want to go. So uh, do you care more about your audience and your income than your excuses? Because I've heard every excuse out there. Well, I don't know how. Well, I'm too busy. Well, I have too many emails. I'm too busy. I can't afford it. I don't know where to start. I don't have time. <laughs> Exactly. But until you commit to it, it's not going to happen. We, you can have all the excuses you want, but that's not going to help your customers, and that's not going to uh, help you either in your multiple streams of speaking income. So you've got to get out of your own way, and you've got to let go of being perfect. The biggest problem that I see with people creating multiple streams of income is they want it to be perfect. Well, you've got you've to let go of that. It's never going to be perfect, but does it transfer value? Is it a good donut? Once you get it to be a good donut, it tastes good, get it out there. Only way to perfect it is by getting feedback. So let's just talk about mindset for a second. What do average people look at versus what are people who are the best and probably the people who earn the most look at? So we look at education. A lot of people think education, that's costly. Uh, people who are the best, that's an investment. I'll go, I'm here at a seminar uh, for Global Speaker Summit in Vancouver, listening to some people that I've heard before. I want to hear them again. Why? Because they're good, because they transfer value, because they've come up with new ideas. So I was doing a, a program, or actually Alan Weiss, one of my mentors, was doing a program in Las Vegas, and I was so excited. I was telling somebody, I can't wait to see this program. And somebody asked me, well, what's the program about? I'm like, I don't know. Who cares? It's Alan. <laughs> You've got to have that sponge mindset. Desire, I know that. That's what a lot of people think. Oh, I've heard that before. Well, a true student, somebody who's the best, they might have heard it before, and maybe they need that reminder, but they're also looking for what's that one tiny tidbit that I can put into action. Average person, someday when it comes to action. People are the best today. What one step, one tiny step that I can take today? Priority, I'm too busy. Well, if you're too busy and you have too many emails or you're, you're not sure where to start, figure out where to start. Put this as a priority before your emails. You've got to make it happen. Make the time. Put it on your calendar. Schedule it. Do you care more about your audiences than your excuses? One quote that I'm known for is, done is more profitable than perfect. Done is more profitable than perfect. Videos, products, writing that are on your computer hard drive will never be accessed by the outside world. So you're being selfish because you want to look good. Let it go. Get it out there. Get some feedback. And if you're helping someone along the way while you're earning money, as well as getting that important feedback to make version 2.0, that's where the gold is. So if you want to jot these down, here are some musts, in my opinion, for creating multiple streams of speaking income. Number one, if you're a speaker, you must be great on the platform. That's your number one tool is how good you are on stage. And a lot of people don't like this, but I say 
record yourself. Record yourself because you never know when you're going to have that magic audience. And that magic audience could give you an instant product. But even if it's not a good audience, even if it's not a great presentation, you can learn from it. And here's the key. I know when I tell people this, uh, I just did a program and I just taught this. And I say, if <laughs> I know when I say record yourself every time, People think, oh, I don't want to record myself. I hate to listen. Oh, well, guess what? The audience had to listen. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to get paid, why should anyone listen to you if you're not willing to listen to yourself? It's one of the first principles I learned in my background, stand-up comedy, record yourself every time. And I show these images in front of you to say, I might have won the world championship, but don't be envious of the trophy. Be envious of the work ethic that brought me here. These are videotapes of speeches that I've given of my own and I've gone back and studied. So be great on the platform. Where is your heart? If you're just there to sell, people will smell it. They can tell what your intention is. So be there to help them. Give them as much as you can in the allotted time. But you are an expert. If you are a good consultant, if you are a good speaker, there should be more that you don't have time to cover. Or just people like to reinforce. You can't learn everything the first time you hear something if you have a rock solid content. So don't sound like an infomercial when you're on stage. Be there, be, uh, give them a genuine offer, but don't try too hard. Uh, how good can you be? These are my coaches. Uh, I had been a speaker for seven years before I got a coach. Coaches make you better. Find a coach. Patricia Fripp uh, is my coach now. If you get a chance, listen to her next week. She's doing a webinar next week about great speaking. Listen to her. Go to Fripp, F-R-I-P-P.com, F-R-I-P-P.com. She's a great coach, and she has lots of great free content on her website. But find a coach somewhere. Um, another uh, thing that I'd like to bring up at this point that you should see is that when we are going to speak at an event, the meeting planner has a goal. And Carol, what do you think is some of the major goals of the event planner, the meeting planner? What do you think is like one of their number one concerns? Bums and seats. Bums and seats. How many people get there? So I learned from Patricia Fripp and another gentleman, Rick Stegall, always try to be the meeting planner's favorite. So now, because YouTube is part of my thing, I create a video for the end user, for the meeting planner to get out to promote their website, their um, their conference. And I don't plug go to DarrenLacroix.com as much as I plug go to Maps.com. So let me show you. Uh, I'm just going to show you a real intro, but this is an example of one that I created. Is this coming through, Carol? Yes, it is. Well, why not join us live in Las Vegas at the Red Rock Casino for the 50th anniversary of NAPS? Okay, so uh, I'll keep going, but that's important, and that helps. The meeting planner loves that. I just look at their sales letter page and create a video, and I don't necessarily promote me. I'm promoting come to the event. Whatever's on the sales letter page, I use that as what I say. But meeting planners love that. And what it also does for me is it brings in what I call before rapport. I have some rapport with the end user. And Maps put this right on their home page of their site when they were promoting this conference. So it really created a closer connection to my audience as well as delighted the meeting planner. And I'm sure I'm probably one of the only speakers that did that. So I'm going to be more memorable to that meeting planner. And meeting planners, no meeting planners. Any questions? No, not yet. Uh, definitely. All right. Well, then we'll keep rolling. Keep going. You stop me, Carol, if any of them come up. So number I two, you must, you must get over the bad stigma. You have to let go, which I know this is a, it's, it's a, a steam challenge that a lot of speakers have, is that I don't want to be that product hawker. Well, you've got to let go of that, or you're never going to help people. And uh, I have a friend who is, uh, he considers himself or worries that he's going to be a product hawker. I have another friend, Guy Burns, who is uh, someone who has learned from some of my boot camps and seminars, has all my products. But what I love about Guy is he's this sponge. He's hungry. And 
both of these gentlemen work for public seminar companies. The hawker is, because in his mind he has a bad stigma, he doesn't do well selling because he looks at it as, I'm selling, I'm pushing. Guy understands that he's helping people, that he can't teach everything he knows in that time frame. So what he did, which blows me away, is he got on a plane, his own cost, and went and learned, spent two days with a gentleman who's one of the top in the company. And he did this to, with more than one person. He wanted to figure out, what are they doing differently that I can do? And he figured out how to get rid of that. And he uh, changed his income dramatically because he got over that stigma and studied people who were in his same company doing what he did to figure out what they were doing so he could do it as well. So you gotta look at the product is just an extension of you. Just like I mentioned with YouTube, here's what I would tell you if you and I were sitting down to have a conversation and I would help you with YouTube. So it's just an extension of time and ex your expertise. Uh, this is one, a thank you for came in from one of my customers. He said, uh, uh, Dwayne, great guy, he said, somewhere I will personally thank you for pushing your product. You really don't know if someone uh, could have busted through my monster, my brick wall, my 40 years of frustration that you have done for me. The dust is still settling. However, things are getting better. Mm. So what he was saying is that because I promote but not as an infomercial, it helped him get through his own challenges. So get over that bad stigma. Number three, you must. You must solve their problems. You and I are problem solvers. That's what we do. That's why people are paying for us. No one pays for a speech. No one pays for a CD. They pay for the solving of the problem in the speech or the solving in the problem on the CD, DVD, or MP3. I love this quote by T. Harv Becker. He said, an entrepreneur is a person who solves problems for people at a profit. What problems do you solve? Look at the market that you have, and they probably have in a range of two or three or four major pro problems, and that's three or four different products that you could be creating. And people might know about them because you give a free speech, and the other the products are the, the more extended answers or problem solving comes from the back of the room. Uh, do you believe in bringing value? Uh, I know the stigma thing is such a challenge. This uh, book is a book called Stand Up Comedy, the book by Judy Carter. Early in my career, uh, I told this story of how when I started going into stand up, that this book helped me. And so just to help my audience, I recommend this resource. And I tell people, write this down. This helped me understand that you could learn how to be funnier. So people uh, write it down. They went and bought it. In fact, so many people went and bought this book because it was part of my speech. It was just organic. That Judy Carter, who I've never met in my life, the author called me up and said, who the heck are you? <laughs> when I explained why and what was happening, it made sense to her. But what I realized is that I needed to consider for my audience, what are their next steps? After I'm done speaking, what should they do next? What I really was the big aha for me is that I had been speaking and talking about this book for so long that it never dawned on me that I could call the publisher, Dell Publishing, and call up and answer uh, and order 10 or more copies and I would get a 40% discount. So right away, if you're just starting, or even if you want to start a new stream of income, who have you learned from? What programs have you learned from? Call the publisher. Call the speaker who created that. And you can probably get it at a great discount because it's an extension of them. So we need to think next steps. And often it's easier to plug somebody else's program than your own. So if I had 100 people in my room, so here's a question for you, Carol. If I had 100 people in my room mm -hmm. and I told them, okay, write this down. How many people do you think out of 100 would write the book down, the book yeah, title? Probably close to 100. <laughs> OK. Yeah. And then, and all with good intentions, but then how many do you think would actually go get the book? Well, you know, it's surprising. A lot of people might, but uh, not necessarily. That it would go away. So just Pick a number. I, I think it'll be a very small number, but pick, go ahead and pick a number. I'd say probably 15 out of 100. 
Yeah, may, that might even be a little generous. Okay, so same situation, same exact 100 people, but now here's the difference, Carol. I have the book in the back of the room. Right. How many people would be more likely to buy it, do you think? Oh, I'd say that probably goes up to 760 or 75. Yeah, so more people are going to walk away with the book. Why? Because I made it easy for them. So now, obviously, 40% isn't a huge markup, but it's something, and it's a start, and it's another stream of income. So until you have your own, here's a great simple way that you could, at your very next presentation, earn some more income and at the same time help your audience. See, the more problems you solve for the more people, the more profits you will have for yourself. The more problems you solve for more people, the more profits you'll have for yourself. So, and look at it as leveraging problem solving. So I have a live seminar, actually one coming up next week with, uh, at the end of this week with Patricia, my coaching camp where we coach speakers live and Patricia and I show them the difference between good and great and how we can change their speech. Or I also have this program called How to Own the Stage, which is a boot camp where Craig Valentine uh, and I brought in a camera crew and filmed it. So it's just like watching the DVDs is just like sitting in the fourth row. So if you want to go from good to great, you could go to a live seminar or you could get this home study course. It's the same content, but it's being offered in a different format. So especially overseas, a lot of people will get this because they don't want to invest in the cost in flying over. Or some people start with this and then they decide to come to a live camp because they want to be coached personally. Your product allows you to leverage your problem solving. Uh, on the live left there, I had this was a humor camp that I did. Well, I did the same thing when I brought in a camera crew and I videotaped the seminar. Now keep in mind, uh, this is something I've been teaching for five years, so I had it really solid and I know what worked and I worked out the kinks before I brought in the camera crew. But it's just a real life example of you can come to the live humor camp or you can get the at home study course, get more laughs by next week. Uh, number four, you must. You must decide. Decide that this is going to be something you do. Decide that I want multiple streams of speaking income. Until the decision is made, there's waffling. There's I'm not sure and well I don't know and I'm not sure. Just decide. Choose. Get committed. Uh, <laughs> Dan Kennedy is somebody who helped me with that early on. Uh, are you committed to helping other people? Uh, David Knox, another gentleman that I learned, and I, I listened to his program. Someone said, oh, you should get this on product. And David Knox, a real estate speaker, did a program at NSA, and I listened to it over and over again until my thinking became in line with his thinking. He was somebody who was a product guru. So I listened to this four, five, six, 20, 30, 40 times to be able to make that happen. So number five, you must. You must instill belief. People who are in front of you must believe that they can do it. So you want to be able to take them back to before you knew how to do it so they can relate to you. So now I tell a story of when I won the world championship. That how, represents how I am now. I also tell a story of stitches, how I was back then, early days. And I want people to see that. So you need a story or something that represents how you were before you learned your expertise. And I'll actually show a video clip of my first time on stage to help instill belief. Mm -hmm. We have to believe that they can learn it or they're never going to buy your other streams of income. They're never going to come to you. They're gonna, just going to think you're gifted, good for you. Another way, uh, another backing up of this, we have to break things down and make it simple. Sometimes we take for granted what we know. So my humor camp, for example, I take the uh, classic Henny Youngman line, take my wife, please, and I dissect it and I show people, here's the thought process and here's what makes people laugh. Here's why. So you have to find a way to break things down and make it simple. People pay for simple, save money, earn money, uh, get rid of pain. So those are the four main reasons that people buy. So you need to be able to break things down and make it simple. Number six, you must. You must crave feedback. Every time you present, ask for feedback, crave feedback. Feedback is the key. And when we're coaching people, 99% of what we're coaching is clarity, clarity, clarity. If you're not clear, your audience doesn't have a chance. 
But if you find out from them that they're confused on this section, okay, we need to clean it up. But craving that feedback will make you better faster. I suggest recording yourself. I suggest you track your own sales. A simple spreadsheet will show you. I do this every time I speak since 1998, I think. I started doing this. And I've tracked it. How many people are there? What was sold? The dollars per head? The percentage of audiences sold? It takes me about five minutes to figure that out. And uh, the golden secret is record yourself and leave it on at the end. Leave it on. Meaning, leave the recorder on. Because what people say to you after the fact is going to be the key to what products you want to create. Yeah, I, let's just say somebody's talking about health and nutrition. Yeah, I, I know I need to be healthier. And they come up to you after your program and say, uh, but, but tell me, what do I have for breakfast? And if you start hearing this over and over again, well, what do I have for breakfast? What do I have for breakfast? Guess what you should create for a product? What to have for breakfast? <laughs> So you, the audience is actually going to give you titles. Now, like people say, you know, YouTube. I want to, you know, I want to earn more on YouTube. So they go on my table and they look YouTube. Very clear. So it helps create that. So I realized that I need to uh, plug my phone in. So I'm going to ask for questions as I run and grab my phone charger. Sorry about that. It's quite Any all right. Questions? Yes. Well, the, we just had one question, which I think I will put out there because I was able to answer it, which is about the recording of this. And yes, okay. absolutely, this uh, presentation is being recorded and access to it will be delivered from Practice Pay Solutions. So you'll have a Ooh, chance you to... You want review. another donut? Yeah, right. more donuts, please. <laughs> I like to reinforce that because that's the exact point. Again, my goal is to give so much good content that people want more. People want more donuts. So now I, I've had to learn how to do this and listen to Patricia over and over again and get passionate about my results for my customers. So number seven, you must you must have the right product for the right audience. The right product for the right audience. I have 81 different products that I've created, but they're not right for every audience. So my office manager, Shiana, and I, when we look at the audience I'm speaking to, we think, okay, what do I have that could be good next steps for this audience? So if I'm in front of a group that presents, hey, I have a lot of different programs on presentation. But if I'm in front of a group of employees, uh, like, for example, I was at Blue Cross uh, Blue Shield of Florida just a couple weeks ago, and they were employees, and they were on the phone telemarketers. They're not presenters. So I just look at, okay, my book, Laugh and Get Rich, and my uh, DVD, Laugh and Let Go, those would be appropriate for that audience. More of a general topic, but I was talking about humor. So I change it for each different audience. Um, Alan Weiss has these questions. He says, okay, why you, who will pay, and how do you reach them? Why you, who will pay, and how do you reach them? And we need to consider this for each of our different audiences. If I'm in front of a multi-level marketing company, which I am, uh, one of my favorite audiences, I want to make sure that I do have my presentation uh, presentation programs with me because a lot of them give presentations. But ask, ask, ask. Talk to the meeting planner and see what you can learn about your audience and what might be good next steps for them that you already have. My first product was learn how the pros make them laugh. And I'm so jealous of people who are starting now because it's so much easier and more affordable to create products to create products. I used to have to have a thousand or 2,500 books created at a time, uh, a thousand CDs created at a time. They didn't make short run in the old days. So uh, make them laugh. When I didn't feel I had my value at the beginning because I was still figuring it out, I was a new comedian and a new speaker. So I went and I interviewed other people who were experts that I had access to. And I used their credibility, their reputations, and their wisdom. I was just the guy who collected it. I collected that information and put it in a usable format. So at the beginning, if you're still figuring out your expertise, interview other people. Uh, Rick Siegel, after I won the world championship, one of my mentors says, Darren, you need to create a product on speaking. And I thought, the world does not need another horrible presentation skills speaker. Because I had seen so many horrible presentation skills speakers. Uh, so he said, Darren, you got to do this. you got to do this. And so I said, fine, just to shut him up, 
and I created this audio CD set called Speak Like a Champion. What I learned through the process from my coaches and from my own experience. And it instantly became my number one seller. See, I didn't want to be in the presentation skills field, but by default, it became obvious this is what I needed to do. It became my number one stream of revenue at that time. Ask your friends. Ask people around you what you could create. They probably got some great ideas, but sometimes we're too close ourselves. Uh, who can you team up with? Uh, this was inspired by the Make Them Laugh set that I had. Is uh, at the bottom there, you see mentors made the difference. Here's a product that I created with David Brooks, who I mentioned earlier, Mark Brown, who was my coach, and then myself. Mentors made the difference. We were never in the same place at the same time. We never recorded this together. I recorded my segment at the time I lived in Oklahoma, Mark on the East Coast, David in Texas, and then we edited them together. So we created a product together uh, because our stories work together. And then we all were able to sell it. So who can you team up with? So here you see Patricia, Ed Tate, and Mark Brown that I teamed up with them for Lady and the Champs. Uh, it's interesting, too, because uh, David got a book deal. David Brooks got a book deal because of a product that I sold to somebody in my audience. It's called Speaking Secrets of the Champion. And the person in the audience gave me the money, bought it, but they loved David and how he thought about journalism and writing. So he teamed up with him to make a book. So it, it's great because each person gets a different benefit. And when I promote things about Lady and the Champs, I'm introducing people in my market to Patricia, to Ed, and to Mark. Um, Ed Tate that I just mentioned, when I won the world championship, he said, Darren, people are going to come up to you and say, I want, they, I want to do what you do. So think of what your audience is asking you. I want to do what you do. They want to get paid to speak. So this became a next product that I created. I took two months off and took what I learned over 15 years in NSA, and I condensed it down to this learning program. So I kept listening to my audience, but also other experts who said, you know what, they're going to want to know this from you. They want to know this from you. So I'm just always listening to my audience. What do they want? How can I help them? How can I make it an easy to understandable system to get them where they want to go? And I don't want you to think everything I do works, because it doesn't. Uh, this was an ad I put in Toastmaster Magazine. was a big flop. This is uh, from, yeah, 2002 or three. And if you're old enough to know, webinars weren't a big thing back then. They were just getting started. So we promoted this, went out to 300,000 Toastmasters. We had one guy from Singapore on the line with us. <laughs> and the ad cost us $2,500. It was horrible. So I just want you to know I make some mistakes as well. Big question for you, how do you support people? How do you support people? And this is a multiple stream of recurring income. And I have my Champion's Edge program that I do with Patricia, Craig, and Ed, and Mark. And I think this is one of the products of the future. because People want to be able to ask you questions. It's a low investment for them. It's a recurring income for me. So uh, residual income for you. Uh, check it out and model what we're doing. But it's an online program where people get a 20% discount off of any of our products. Uh, they get a monthly conference call where we coach people live. They get a weekly lesson. And they have an online community where we have hundreds of lessons uh, from the past that we've accumulated over years, where people, it's just a library for people to dive into. Dive into. Any questions? Uh, just looking here, just uh, here's one right from Michael. Um, he just is saying you're doing a fantastic job, and um, he answers you are answering your questions before he can post them. <laughs> all right, well, perfect. But thank you. Uh, all right, keep moving. Uh, I also so the edge is about the skill. I also have a product called GetPaidToSpeak.com, which is a way that people again can ask me questions and be on webinars like this on a regular basis and even be more interactive rather than me pushing out information, people ask me questions. So it's kind of like consulting uh, on the business of speaking. We call it our mastermind. Uh, again, to me, residual income, to them, it's a small investment. It's $47 a month to be able to ask questions and have access to that $500 program, get paid to speak by next week. Number eight, you must. You must understand traffic. If you're doing live programs, 
where the room is, where the bathroom is, where the stage is. You need to understand the flow of traffic and put your table in that flow of traffic. Sometimes I want it in the room. Sometimes I want it outside the room. It depends what's happening right after me. I always want it in the room if I can. If there's another speaker, I don't want to have a group of people you know, throwing their credit cards at me while the next speaker is going on stage. So in that case, I want it outside the room, but I want to consider where the food is. And again, think flow. Get in front of the flow, because it only takes one or two people to stop and look, and then other people, like that herd mentality, other people will come and stop and look. But if you're in the bookstore or somewhere else, by the way, never do a bookstore. It's a nice idea, but no people either are interested right then or forget it. And don't don't uh, be over overexcited and think that oh they'll go to the bookstore, they'll go to the, go to the trade show. The only time you do product at a trade show is if uh, one of the sponsors is willing to pay for a book signing for you. So they buy a bunch of books and you go to their their. Uh, trade show booth and sign them there, which gives them traffic, so another way to get some income. Don't give them a reason not to buy today. Mm -hmm. Humans have an overactive justification gland. If they can delay the purchase idea, uh, look, this isn't manipulation. This is just good sales and good selling. Don't let them have a reason not to buy. Here's what I mean by that. This gentleman, a friend of mine, great guy, funny guy, Brad Montgomery. He's a speaker who uh, he asked me to review this order form of his, and I said, "Sure, I'd be happy to." Uh, one question: Are you? A, would you allow me to show people what not to do, and use this as an example? And one of the key things is that uh, right here in the middle it says Brad Combo. He says it's his most popular package. Okay, but the other one right below it says it's the, the best deal. Okay, so most people don't want the best deal. That doesn't even make sense. And then most importantly, if you look at the bottom there, it's got his name, phone number, and address, and website. Never put that on an order form because what's the thought process going to be? Oh, I'll just get this later. And they put it on the pile of other piles of other things they're never, ever going to get to. Get that off your live order form. Look, people can Google you. It's easy to find you if you want, but don't give them a reason not to. Number nine, you must accept credit cards. And if you don't have practice pay, get practice pay. I have their merchant account, their, uh, the online shopping cart. I love the cart. Very simple to do, and I'm not a high technology guy. Also think packages. Only give people like an A, B, C option. And if you have business audiences, you want to be able to accept American Express. So because it's, a, it's an impulse buy generally, Unless it's just a $20 book. Everybody's got a 20. We'll get to that in a second. Um, if you have a book, read from your book. Even though the introducer might hold it up and say, author of this book, I open mine up and read uh, from it. I find a passage of good content, aha, that I can tell my audience about, but I read from it and then I give it away. So now that gets other people to want to buy it. Uh, let's, number 10, you must understand everyone has a 20. Everyone's got a 20. Do not have any products less than 20. You're making problems for yourself. So if I have a $20 book and a $20 CD, what I do is I bring them both and I say, for today, you get them both for 20. So you give them a great deal. But my cost of my book's like four bucks. My cost of the CD is a dollar. Now my cost is five dollars, but I make $15, $15 markup. If I just had a it tried to give them a discount, I'll get the book for 18, get the CD for 12. Carol, guess what I would have to do on my way to the presentation? Bank machine? <laughs> yeah, well, they bank machines don't even give less than 20. That's you have to true. Go to a bank to get a list, and get a roll of one dollar bills. Yeah. So, uh, you've got to think this through. Make it easy, especially at the lower price. At the higher price, it's all going to be credit cards. But at the lower price, keep it round $20 numbers. Number 11, you must. You must have fun with your product commercial. You can't be great and great energy, and then all of a sudden your commercial comes, and I have this in the back of the room. If you want it, you don't have to get it. But, and then you come to life again. Well, now you've just taken the, this negative emotion and connected it to your product. So have fun with it. Find a way. Uh, David Brooks <laughs> said, and listen, you know, record yourself and listen to your demeanor. David Brooks has a great joke, and he says, uh, 
you know, I, I'm happy to be here. You know I'm here for free, and uh, I really only could afford a one-way ticket. So, so <laughs> he kind of has fun with that. I'd like to go home and see my son and wife. Um, number 12, you must, you must offer in your program agreement. And what I mean by that is if you're on a fee-based or even free-based, you want to tap into other budgets. So in my speaker agreement, I literally list, you can get Darren's product for half price for everyone in your audience. So you're tapping into other buzz budget. Having product becomes a negotiating tool. That's part of the power of product. The most important must, though, is you must sell results. You must sell the results. It's not an eight CD set with a workbook. It, here's how to get your first check, even if you don't know where to start. Own the stage. This is not a 10 DVD set. This is the secret from how to take your speech from good to great. Get more laughs. This isn't a 10 DVD set and 12 CDs. This is how to get laughs even if you don't think you're funny. And I'll prove it. So you got to think, what's the result that the recipient wants? You really got to get clear. If I could get you to do one thing, that would be it. What's the result? And never talk about the format. Only talk about the results. And finally, they don't get it. You got to be so clear and make it so simple. Uh, I came up with this brilliant product. You post it, you profit. And it was about posting videos online and how to earn an income from it. Well, in the back of the room, people would look at it and they would ask me a hundred questions. Even though I told them it's YouTube, they didn't get it. So I changed the title of the product to YouTube it. So now it's simpler, it's clearer, and they get it. Give them options of A, B, C. Um, and have fun with it, but make it clear. And finally, they don't, they don't buy after they leave. Look, once in a while, I've been in front of thousands of people uh, every month. Maybe once a month, I'll have somebody buy something after. But I use the shopping cart to stay top of mind with them, so they do. But if I didn't do that, they wouldn't buy later. They're going to buy right then when the emotion is high. Um, there's always exceptions. However, they don't, and they never will. So make sure you do everything you can to uh, have that emotional choice logical for them as well. And they want to take it with them. Even though there's MP3s in different formats and people like it digitally, people are still, especially my audience, middle aged to older, they still want to have it and touch it. And there'll be a day where that goes away and everybody wants digital, but they still want something. So I've created even a thumb drive product where they can still walk away with that thumb drive. So people type, like to take it with them. Uh, you must collect their contact info. I pass a little clipboard, it sounds ancient, but when I bring it back, my assistant, uh, my office manager, they enter the emails right into the shopping cart. In fact, that's what I did last night for my other speech I did earlier this week. I entered their email address to get them into my funnel. Mm -hmm. um, Dan Kennedy says, all speaking is a way to collect names so you can sell them stuff later on. <laughs> your list is your most valuable asset. Keep that in mind. Uh, stage time, I pass my clipboard for my stage time newsletter after I've established credibility. So you never do it right up front, you establish credibility first. I invested a lot into learning how to be a better marketer, how to do this the hard way. So here's one of my receipts, five grand to learn how to write copy, to learn how to market this way. Uh, this is the end result. This is what I want to help you get, multiple streams of speed speaking income. My email box doesn't look like this every day, but three, four times a year, I do really well, and throughout the year, one, two a day. It trickles in. However, this is our goal. This is what I want to help you get, multiple streams of speaking income. When I launch Get Paid to Speak, one of the days, you don't know already in uh, Practice Pay, you get a settlement report. So you see there right in the middle, uh, $6,900 in a day. Hmm. Does your donut make them want more? You've got to have good content. It's got to be a tasty donut. You can't tell them everything in an hour, or an hour and a half. But you've got to be really good that they may want more donuts. Follow the path of experience and build a handrail with your experience. Done is more profitable than perfect. Uh, if anyone is interested, 
These are some of my different programs, how to write a speech, how to get more laughs by next week, how to get paid to speak. And if you use the code WEB33, WEB33, using the shopping cart in the next 24 hours, you can get a 33% discount of any of those programs I talked about or anything on the web. Carol? Absolutely fabulous. And we have completely run out of time. Darren, that was just delightful. I just can't tell you how much information that I got out of it, and, and uh, your donut was very tasty. Really, really <laughs> wonderful. Thank, thank you, you so much. And I just want to thank everyone in the audience as well for uh, attending and being involved and engaged, and uh, also those who have listened to the recording. Thank you, thank you. And as you mentioned, Patricia Fripp is with us next Tuesday. That's December 17th, and I'm sure she'll have some marvelous information about speaking as well. So just want to thank you once again and remind everyone just to take advantage of this marvelous offer that Darren has provided. Uh, go to howtoownthestage.com and the code is web33. So thank you, thank you. And uh, your contact information was the one thing that we just wanted to get in here. How do people get in touch with you, Darren? Uh, Darren at DarrenLacroix.com. Darren, D-A-R-R-E-N, at DarrenLacroix.com. Wonderful. Okay, and I'm just putting into the chat box. Go to the right website. Yes. All right. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much, Carol. You're Sorry, welcome. I didn't let you talk much. Oh, so that's much okay. <laughs> okay, thank you thank so you much. Thank you, everyone. Okay. I hope this has been helpful for you. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye now. All right, take care. Bye-bye.